Good day, happy migration week, and welcome to the GFMD Mayor's Mechanism Briefing to the Global Task Force of Local and Regional Governments towards the International Migration Review Forum in May 2022. I am Prachi from UCLG, and I will quickly present some technical notes. So firstly, you can access language interpretation in English, French, and Spanish at the globe icon at the bottom of your screen. So we'll have a set of panel interventions first with updates about the IMRF process, and then an open floor where you can react and share uh, your questions and updates. So now I address the attendees. Attendees, you may uh, utilize the Q&A box and the, for questions and comments and the chat box as well. If you have any specific questions for any of our panelists, feel free to uh, specify that and we will submit them to the panelists. Now for the panelists, you may request the floor by raising your hand using the raise hand uh, button at the bottom. And do not hesitate to share any resources that you deem will be useful for local governments and regional governments towards the implementation of GCM and IMRF. And now I pass the floor to our UCLG Secretary General, Emilia Saiz, who will open the session. Over to you, Emilia. Well, thank you very much, uh, Prachi and, and colleagues, uh, for joining us. Um, it is quite important for us in the Mayor's uh, Mechanism for the Mayor's Migration Council and, and for UN Migration, uh, whose representatives are going to address you in a minute, to, um, to celebrate uh, this, this session, because we take Migration Week very much at heart. It's important for us. The role of our local and regional government constituency in managing migration, in making sure that human mobility is part and parcel of our daily lives and that as such, it is acknowledged as a right and as a natural phenomenon is, is part of why we work um, in, in these organizations. And we feel that that needs to be more present in Migration Week. And we also feel that it is necessary for member states, um, but also for other actors that are interacting uh, in this Migration uh, Week uh, towards uh, the review. Um, they need to understand in the International Migration Review Forum that human mobility is a topic that is not for specialists. It's a day-to-day -day concern of any sphere of government in the world, and in particular, that sphere of government that it is closest to the citizens, local and regional governments. And we wanted to share with you how we local and regional governments organizations are organized because we have created this movement over a hundred years ago and we are very diverse. There are many organizations that work for and by uh, local and regional governments. And those that are active internationally have gathered in what we call the global task force of local and regional governments, which United Cities and local governments facilitates. But we are over 27 organizations that are gathered here, looking at things that are of interest for all of us. And migration is one of those topics that we have identified of interest for all of us, no matter whether you work on culture and local governments or on climate and local governments, on whatever you work with local governments, migration is at its heart. And we decided to put it on our joint agenda uh, a few years ago. So uh, covering these 27 organizations, we thought it, what, it was important to uh, share with, with all of you. And I am so pleased to see uh, colleagues uh, from CLGF, the Secretary General, Lucy Slack, uh, thank you for joining us. Regional representation from, uh, from uh, the Council uh, of uh, European uh, Regions and Municipalities. Uh, our colleagues from UCLG, Mewa, Metropolis uh, representatives. There are too many uh, to mention. I am very happy that you're here with us. 
um, because I think we need to align even more the messages that we want the international community to hear uh, from us, but also to let that international community feel that, that we are organized, that we know how to amplify our voices and that we have joint messages that we want uh, to deliver. So I, I'll stop here because you will be hearing from me later on. And I want to give the floor now to Vittoria Sanuso, the Executive Director of the Mayor's uh, Migration Council. Um, also a, a, a true believer of the role that local and regional governments need to play uh, around uh, migration, uh, sharing uh, objectives and uh, and aspirations, I, I would say, uh, um, Vittoria. Uh, thank you for joining us. Um, and to you, the floor on your own perspective, from the perspective, uh, perspective of the Mayor's Migration Council, how are we looking at uh, this week and at the International Migration Review uh, Forum? The floor is yours, dear friend. Thank you, Emilia, for your work, a warm uh, um, welcome and for your warm partnership for welcoming the, Mayor, the Mayor's Migration Council to be part of the Global Task Force. For us, uh, it's a true honor and, and I'm really happy to, to join today and, and really strategize with the constituency as the only member of the Global Task Force that is, that is solely or exclusively uh, uh, focused on migration, hoping to bring some perspective, but also to learn from all of you uh, how you're looking at the topic uh, as it intersects with other uh, priorities from, from health to, to climate and, and all in between. Uh, so yes, uh, 2022 is a critical milestone uh, for city leadership uh, on migration. This May in New York, the UN will hold the first IMRF, International Migration Review Forum. This is the first ever review of the Global Compact for Migration or GCM. Uh, which was adopted by member states uh, back in 2018. And for those experts on the call, really pardon my um, inaccurate, but uh, hopefully accessible um, comparison. Sometimes uh, when I speak with my family or with my friends and, and try to explain them why the GCM is so important, I try to say it's almost the Paris Agreement for migration. It's the overall framework that we're striving towards, that states are striving towards, and that cities are trying to, to implement to help, to, to help achieve from the ground up. So uh, we'll hear more about the meeting itself in a moment uh, for now. But for now, I, I'd like to highlight why this is important, the journey they got us here, and what's next. So uh, most of us know that cities are important to the immigration discussion because they are home to most of the uh, voluntary migrants, but also the displaced. I believe the latest stats from UNHCR is 70% of the world's displaced uh, live in cities. But cities are also uh, where today's most pressing challenges are playing out, from COVID-19 to the climate crisis. And of course, uh, it is really national governments who deal with questions of borders, of visas, and the like, uh, questions of immigration. But it's at the city level that uh, really one must address uh, the immediate needs of existence, whether that's shelter, food, healthcare, schools or jobs, and, 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 and really much more than that. And it's at the city level that newcomers and receiving communities experience social inclusion uh, truly in, in, in their lived experience. Sometimes the lack of social inclusion, so it's not always uh, positive. Uh, so because of this centrality to, the, to, to migration governance uh, in 2017 and 2018, mayors really took it upon themselves to get involved and try to influence the drafting and the negotiation of the Global Compact on Migration and the Global Compact on Refugees. And um, as, as an official, a city official from Atlanta told us uh, at that time, in the morning she would uh, be visiting migrant communities to tackle issues of discrimination and from landlords and, and really do her job uh, on the ground. And then in the afternoon, she would go back in the office and redline draft versions of the GCM, making sure that principles that were important to her and her constituencies could stay in the text. And she wasn't the only one. All of the mayors that are part of uh, our founding um, leadership board of the Mayor's Migration Council, we're very actively involved in these negotiations. We have here on the call, I see Bettina from uh, the city of Zurich, 
the, the mayor, Mayor Mao, and congratulations on the, on the recent uh, re-election, um, was very much involved uh, and, and, and mayors themselves were at the sidelines of the conference that adopted the, the compact. So um, this advocacy was largely successful. Uh, local governments were eventually recognized as stakeholders in both the GCM and GCR. And uh, cities really made sure that the fundamental issues uh, of non-discriminatory access to health services remained in the final text uh, of the compact, despite some opposition from, from, from other uh, stakeholders. Uh, this principle uh, was adopted in 2018 and then it became more and more important when COVID uh, erupted uh, years later. So it is to say that uh, this, this, this compact stayed relevant uh, throughout time. And uh, besides redlining the text, mayors stepped up politically. 150 of them came together on the silence of the conference uh, and endorsed what we call the Marrakesh uh, Mayor's Declaration. Um, a declaration where mayors are committing to implement the two compacts uh, in unison, uh, both on, on migrants and refugees. That's because um, mayors uh, and, and those on the line that really that represent cities can, can really share that uh, and, and, and share your thoughts. But my impression is really that at the end of the day, uh, mayors and city leaders are concerned that someone is a city resident and is uh, within the, the boundaries of the city and is being taken care of. Uh, they care less about whether they technically are a refugee or um, an IDP or an asylum seeker. That, that really is more a, a matter of immigration policy, not of inclusion. Um, so um, um, now, four years later, the energy uh, and the and, yeah and the, and the spirit uh, of, of participation is still very well uh, very well alive cities remain very committed to the gcm and their contributions are even more acknowledged and recognized uh, by the un uh, the secretary general just issued recently a report uh, where it recognizes the instrumental role that local governments play in the delivery of the compact and really calls member states to see local governments as their allies as they try to really achieve these very ambitious goals. Um, as well uh, documented in the report, uh, not only cities are taking action, and the report really mentions explicitly uh, <clears throat> actions from the mayor's mechanism, for example, the, the call to action that, that Sophie will be talking about uh, in just a bit. It, it, it mentions the Global Task Force on Migration, a number of other uh, initiatives um, uh, of our cities. Um, but cities are not only doing a lot now, they are ready to do more. Um, and uh, Sophie, as I said, will, will tell us more uh, about our plan to capture the wealth of progress that, that we want to bring to the MRF. But tomorrow we have another important milestone. Tomorrow the Secretary General is presenting his plan to get to the MRF um, uh, over the next uh, few months to member states. And uh, tomorrow I'll be at the uh, General Assembly in New York to really bring this message uh, front and center, um, the message that cities want to be included uh, in the process. They want to be physically uh, included in this space in New York City. And so they, will, they need to be allowed to do that. Uh, these are the three calls that we want to push, which are, have been drafted and, 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 and crafted together with Emilia, Cecile, and our partners uh, at the Mayor's Mechanism. First consult cities, consult cities uh, in the uh, GCM implementation strategies and reviews. All of these countries, they need to put it together to, to present their progress. It's important they, that they leverage the wealth of cities uh, really facing these issues uh, in, in real life. Second, partner with cities. As, ma as member cities are uh, thinking about their pledges and their commitments to showcase at the, to showcase at the forum, what about they actually uh, draft pledges that involve cities as implementing partners or design partners? And then finally, and most importantly, include mayors. Uh, invite mayors to be part of the national delegations that are participating at the MRF, if that's the way to, to, to be able to be present uh, in New York City. Um, with that said, my hope for today is that uh, as a group, we can achieve two things. First, join forces as uh, global task force members given the importance of this political moment 
I hope that each member of the task force will use the tools that were created at the uh, mayor's mechanism to mobilize your constituencies and to elevate their successes to the global community. And second, to share with our UN partners on the line, our collective willingness to act and to help, uh, it really to help you show progress on these global goals. We have a wealth of concrete actions and political leadership we are ready to bring to the UN table. Now it's time to secure our seat to the table. Um, I'll leave it to you now, back to you, uh, back to you Emilia. Thank you for, for Thank you very space. much. <laughs> thank you, my, thank you very much, uh, Tori, for uh, for those uh, inspiring words and also a very good overview of, of 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 the path that we have gone through together. For the international actors and the UN community, what we want to introduce them with this briefing is to the broad ecosystem of organized local and regional government. Eh? It's, it's not only the small group that you usually see uh, in the uh, in the specialist moments. It's 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 a it's a it's a it's a universe. Um, uh, of organized local and regional government. And, and also a very important call that you are making. Um, it is great to have uh, local and regional governments acknowledged as important actors, but it is a pity that the process of the International Migration Review Forum is, is not using the structures of the major groups that we already have within the UN system and, and, and ensure that kind of interlocution, accreditation and participation mechanism that we have already conquered in a hard quest in other uh, processes. And someone that knows all about this because she has been in the quest with us is, uh, <laughs> is my dear uh, colleague Cecile Riant from um, uh, from IOM, uh, head of the Migration and Sustainable Development Unit. I always need to pick and, and, and look at this because it's a long unit, uh, International Organization for Migration, a key partner uh, for this work. Uh, welcome, Cecile, and, and thank you for joining us. Many, many thanks, uh, Emilia. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, uh, everyone. It's indeed a real pleasure to be, to be with you, exactly for, for the reasons you've mentioned, Emilia, because it's really helping us to, to talk beyond the usual suspects, so to speak, because I think Vittoria did an amazing job in recalling how much has been achieved indeed in mobilizing uh, you know, some key constituencies uh, within local and regional authorities and, and city leaders, but there's still much more that, that, that we can do in order to spread this word and, and really to, to, to display the critical message that actually the Global Compact on Migration is not an abstract set of principles. This is really something that the day is the daily bread and butter of city leaders, of local and regional authorities. And I think, Vittoria, you did an amazing job in articulating those critical entry points. So really, at the end of the day, we are not looking at something that is far from us. This is really what we do on a daily basis, but we need collectively to recognize it. And why is it important? Because otherwise this work doesn't get really translated into political commitments, into something that at the end of the day is really going to have weight to be able to be, there, be brought at scale and influence for real, uh, the way we are moving forward. For example, defining what is the future of human mobility uh, you know, after COVID-19, what, what is it that we, we want uh, in terms of the, the governance of migration? And of course, the Global Compact on Migration is, is an incredibly important uh, framework for that matter. And uh, I really like the idea of coining this as the equivalent of uh, the Paris Agreement for Migration Governance. I think that that, that is a, a very good way to, to, to look at it. Because indeed, it is local and regional governments who know what migration governance and the objectives of the GCN means on a daily basis. So let me, for example, recall that you local authorities, you are the front lines of service delivery as coined in objective 15 on issues like inclusivity and non-discrimination as coined in uh, objective 17 or recruitment decent work objectives as uh, six and many other objectives, of course. But let me reflect on one element where I think we still have some margin for progression. Uh, as we know, the Global Compact on Migration is heavily rooted in the 2030 agenda. And we know how, again, committed uh, local and regional authorities 
are to the delivery of the 2030 agenda. But we couldn't help noticing as we were reviewing uh, last year, the, the local uh, voluntary reviews that were you know, submitted by cities and local authorities to the high level political forum, which as we know is the um, annual forum that looks into achievements that we're collectively making towards the SDGs that very few cities actually connected all of the good work that they're doing on social inclusion, on local development, uh, on uh, issues related to uh, economic uh, prosperity in general within communities with human mobility or, or migration considerations. So we can see that collectively there's much more that we need to connect in order to make sure that you know, we bring all of these in a coherent manner to the attention of the other stakeholders and critically to the attention of governments. Um, and I can only say that, of course, as IOM, we are extremely committed uh, to work along those lines with you. Um, as you know, IOM is the coordinator and the secretariat of the UN, uh, United Nations Network on Migration. I'd be very happy to have uh, Jonathan uh, talking to us uh, in, in a very short while. And really within the UN network on migration, we really have tried to integrate uh, city voices as well as local and regional authorities uh, in, the, in the very you know, way in which we work. Uh, so concretely, and particularly thanks to UCLG as well as the, the, the mayor's mechanism, we have been designing some concrete guidance mechanism and tools for governments uh, to, as they are going forward with implementing the Global Compact on Migration, so helping them to have methodologies that are inclusive as, as much as possible to the different voices and the different actors that need to really be brought together to implement the GCM. Also, we have worked uh, with UCLG and the Mayor's Mechanism to define uh, some, um, some clear guidelines for the UN system itself this famous UN system, Emilia, you were referring to before, that is making sure that, you know, as we are moving forward with our work addressing development challenges at country level, we do understand how migration comes in and why it is an important element that needs to be taken into account to prioritize our work. Um, so really this being a game changer uh, down the line. So only to say that, you know, we, we really want to work uh, more and more with you in very concrete manners, not only to take stock of your accomplishments vis-a-vis uh, -vis the GCM, but really to include you in the, the actual rollout of the GCM within countries and bridging sometimes maybe some differences that may exist with the national government. So you can really count on us to, to be playing this important role. So I will finish here and just, uh, you know, being very excited to hear about the, 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 the conversation that is going to, to happen right now. Um, and I will be coming uh, back at the end for some concluding remarks. So over to you, Emilia. Thank you. Well, thank you very much, Cecile. And, and, and from everything that, that we have shared eh, as, as, as co-organizers of, of this briefing session from, from the Global Task Force, the, the only thing uh, that I am missing is emphasizing how relevant it is in this in this particular topic to look at the regional interests as well. You know, world regions have very different experiences and needs around migration. And although the underlying values and perspectives need to be the same, um, I think it's very critical for the regional organizations of local and regional governments to, uh, to be very involved in the type of messages uh, that we provide uh, um, to the to the International Migration Review Forum, but to the whole process in, in general. So with that, allow me to go back to, uh, to Tori. Uh, we are in your hands uh, for the second segment, um, uh, Tori. Um, you are facilitating this, I understand. Good luck with <laughs> <Yes>. that. <laughs> yes. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Emilia. And let's really uh, dive right in. I appreciate your comment on, on regional, uh, on regional uh, networks, and, and later we can talk about the Africa-Europe Mayor's Dialogue, which is a great initiative really looking at that from a, from a corridor perspective. But let's uh, dive right in. I'm pleased to, to now welcome our uh, UN partners, uh, starting with Jonathan Prentice, the head of the Secretariat of the UN Migration Network, which coordinates the UN system uh, wide support uh, for the GCM. Jonathan, uh, welcome. Uh, what about you give us um, an overview of the MRF, uh, what's at stake, and, and how can local governments get involved? Thank you very much, uh, Vittoria, and uh, good morning, good afternoon, wherever you all 
may be. I hope you're doing well. And many thanks also to the, the Global Task Force and the, the GFMD Mayor's Mechanism and their partners for putting um, this, I think, very important meeting together. And we've already heard from the opening speakers just why, uh, if it needs reinforcing, why local authorities, regional governments, uh, municipal authorities are so important to this uh, collective endeavor that we're, we're all embarking on of uh, shoring up the GCM, bringing it to life and really helping uh, this framework to explore the outer reaches of its uh, potential, recognizing I think that we're still in the early days uh, of the life of, um, uh, of the global compact. Uh, Victoria mentioned the launch of the Secretary General's report in uh, New York tomorrow. Many thanks, Victoria, for uh, participating in that. We're very much looking forward to that. It will be a high level event. And I just wish to say a little bit about the Secretary General's report, because I, I, I think this is an opportunity that we shouldn't uh, lose sight of. Of course, this is a particular report in that he is mandated through this report by the General Assembly to provide guidance to the direction of the International Migration Review Forum. So I think it behoves us all to take note uh, of the findings of the report and of the directions he suggests, the, he suggests the international community needs to uh, look to in the future. Uh, and of course, a couple of things about the report. Uh, I won't read it all out to you. You can read it yourselves. But you know, he is very clear throughout that the guiding principles, the DNA of the global compact, really need to be upheld at every step of the way. And of course, this includes uh, the whole of government approach. Uh, and the whole of society approach. We are unambiguous uh, in that report. Secondly, I would refer you to the four baskets or clusters of priority issues that he identifies as needing particular attention uh, in the coming period. Uh, and these revolve around issues of inclusion, uh, of strengthening uh, regular pathways, of saving lives, uh, and of capacity building. Uh, and under these four chapeau priorities are 14 actionable recommendations uh, regarding issues about uh, universal health coverage, about separating immigration enforcement activities from service provision, about upholding people's rights to legal identity, all, I think, issues that would speak very clearly and very loudly uh, to local authorities uh, and on which local authorities uh, would have an immense amount of both experience and expertise to impart. So I would encourage you, as you look to how to engage to take the SG's report and its recommendations as one of your starting points uh, and to think through how um, you can, I apologize for this glare uh, uh, behind me, um, uh, to, to think through how you can help unpack them uh, and programatize them, uh, either contextually or, or on a global level. Um, so, let me say a little bit about the the IMRF, and I won't speak uh, uh, at length because I think it's important that we open up the floor. Is that this is the first? Again, Victoria made this point. It's a self-evident point, but it's a vital point because here we have the opportunity to set the tone uh, and the level of ambition and the style that we would like future international migration review forums to follow. So I would suggest that that is staying true to the 360 uh, degree nature of the GCM, that we are able to explore all 23 objectives equally. Uh, and I would suggest also that it, it should be the case that we remain true to all 10 uh, of the guiding principles in all that we do, preparing for uh, and at uh, the IMRF, because of course, what distinguishes the GCM from simply being a collection of nice sounding words and aspirations is that the member states built into it very concrete mechanisms to assess progress. 
we've already had the first round of regional reviews uh, and now we are entering uh, the uh, first global review. So we need to inject that commitment with meaning and ensure that in addition to looking backwards on what has and hasn't been achieved, that we also look forward to what more we can do in a concrete way. Um, so what would success uh, constitute? It's very difficult to say in any precise terms, but I would say it would be an inclusive process uh, that results in honest dialogue and a commitment to concrete uh, actions. Um, now, let me say a little bit, if I may, about the opportunities to engage uh, on the part of uh, local authorities. And here I'd like to break it up into the preparatory process, the stage we're in now. Some, we've got some 90 more days before the uh, IMRF begins, uh, and then the meeting itself. Um, taking that first piece first, the now, the preparations, um, I would suggest that there are uh, a, a number of vehicles in which I would strongly encourage the full-throated engagement of local uh, authorities. One is through the dialogues that we have launched as part of the roadmap towards the IMRF. And I know that many of you did participate in the discussions to prepare for the four roundtable uh, components of the IMRF. And I'm very grateful for the time you took to do that. But keep on contributing. We have the discussion spaces. So those are the, the, the written submissions. Uh, that will enrich uh, the information flow to inform the IMRF. And we will also now be having, now that we've completed the roundtable discussions, we'll be having some thematic specific uh, discussions. For example, on the 23rd of February, there will be one looking at the nexus between climate change and mobility. Uh, please do participate contribute. On the 9th of March, we have one looking at the um, uh, extremely pressing uh, um, issues around objective aid of the GCM, how to better save lives uh, and protect migrants in perilous uh, situations. Uh, so the dialogues, the discussion, the process of informing each other about what we're up to, about what we need to look at, so that when we get to May in New York, we're not at a standing start. You know, the engine is well oiled, we're familiar with all the issues, we're beginning to identify what the priority areas are, we're beginning to sharpen the language about what some of these concrete actions could be. Uh, and that is what this whole preparatory process is about. Secondly, please, please, please contribute to the repository of practice. Uh, this is mandated by the GCM as part of the capacity building mechanism. It promises to be a vital resource from which to draw, but it requires the oxygen of all of us to contribute. The UN system, member states, stakeholders, all aspects of government, including, of course, local authorities. Please submit your practices. You know these much better than we do, uh, so that we can start creating this really, I think, lively ecosystem of peer exchange uh, and knowledge sharing. And we have so much to learn from each other, but it does require that kickstarting uh, at the beginning. Thirdly, a number have already uh, mentioned this, uh, the pledging initiative, I think, is vital. This received the highest level of support from the UN system, the Secretary General, the President of the GA. Uh, there is no timeline on the pledges, though obviously we would encourage them to come earlier rather than later uh, to stimulate others. Um, we note the city's call to action um, initiative, and that sounds fantastic, and the efforts to align that with the GCM objectives. Uh, the more that we can build up momentum and show what concrete uh, pledges could look like, the better. And they're slowly starting to trickle in. We're going to advertise them. We'll set up a dashboard, a pledgeometer, if you will, where we can showcase uh, all of these. Uh, uh, and again, 
in some ways it is going to complement the repository because we can um, uh, uh, people could use the repository to draw inspiration for what types of pledges they also uh, could make, if you will. Um, I think it's important to encourage your national authorities to either refresh or if they haven't submitted already, do from the start a voluntary GCM review. Uh, this itself could be a pledge. A member state could pledge to, in, in, to submit a voluntary GCM review ahead of the IMRF, but based on inclusive consultations, based on consultations that reflect the whole of government and whole of society uh, approaches. So I think at the local level, working with your national partners would be very welcome there. Uh, and then, of course, there is the process leading up to about which we don't yet have a great deal of information leading up to the uh, progress declaration. The progress declaration, of course, is the outcome document of the IMRF. Uh, that will be the, the sort of table of contents is enumerated in the uh, modalities resolution. Um, and just last week, uh, the president of the General Assembly appointed the permanent representatives in New York of Bangladesh and Luxembourg uh, to lead the process of intergovernmental consultations to develop the um, to develop the progress declaration. The, the pr precise mechanics and schedule and modalities of that are still being worked out. They were only just appointed, as I said last week, uh, but the indications are that they are keen to have an inclusive process. So think through amongst yourselves what language, if you could write a paragraph in the progress declaration reflecting your interests reflecting the importance of the role of local authorities being forward-looking what would it look like if you had held the pen an interesting thought exercise to write one short paragraph how could you take best advantage of that uh, and that might be a useful thing to have on the back of an envelope uh, for when the discussions take place in, in earnest. And then, of course, there's the range of um, opportunities in the meeting itself. Of course, it takes place in New York, as we all know, from the 17th to the 20th of May. It is preceded on the 16th of May uh, by a one-day stakeholder consultation uh, um, uh, uh, hosted by the President of the General Assembly. Uh, and the ways, I think, in which to be... Um, uh, to participate would be to work with your national capitals to ensure that local authorities are part of government delegations. Uh, we are subject here to the General Assembly rules and procedure. They are written in granite, written in blood. They are written for all eternity. They are unlikely to be changed. Uh, um, so we need to uh, ensure that the words in the modalities resolution encouraging national authorities member states to ensure that the whole of government and whole of society guiding principles are reflected in the delegations they send to the imrf are indeed uh, upheld um, and this in fact could be a pledge uh, as we've structured the pledging initiative they could be process oriented pledges. For example, I've mentioned the inclusive national consultations. Uh, another type would be that the uh, national delegations reflect those two guiding uh, principles. Uh, there, I think there are also opportunities in the one day uh, hearing on the 60th consultations on the 16th of May. Uh, we're hoping to have a planning meeting on that uh earlier in the first half of march we're working that out with the office of the president of the general assembly uh, because i think it's important that stakeholders have a very uh uh influential role in shaping uh the nature of those consultations uh, and then of course the round tables uh um uh allow for uh keynote um uh keynote speakers uh, and also uh, meaningful space uh, for all stakeholders. Uh, we've yet to receive the 
details on how the keynote speakers will be appointed by the President of the General Assembly, but we are certainly at our end encouraging uh, an inclusive uh, approach to that. Uh, and then finally, if I may, the coordinator of the network, uh, the Director General of IOM, is uh, mandated by the modalities resolution to facilitate uh, the policy debate. And we're now discussing internally uh, how we can best shape a policy debate. This is in some ways the forward-looking component of the IMRF, if you will. Uh, uh, how best we can shape that debate uh, to ensure that uh, voices uh, across government and across stakeholders are meaningfully uh, heard. Um, so, slightly short, slightly rushed, but those I think are some of the, the main elements with many thanks, Victoria. Thank you, Jonathan. Thank you for the very concrete uh, ideas and, 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 and paths. Um, thank you for the general support that uh, you've always uh, shown to the constituency uh, for recognizing even this briefing as part of UN uh, Migration Week is symbolically very important. Um, I could really, um, I could not, uh, I, I, sometimes um, the world, the word pledge uh, sounds a bit, oh, okay, it's a pledge, it's a, it's a, it's a commitment, but uh, who knows if it's going to happen or not. I actually think that the pledging uh, system is actually is very important because, first of all, is a way to show the uh, wealth of progress and action and energy that is stemming out from different constituencies. But at the same time, it's also a way to create almost a marketplace. What, what are all of those actions that we want to elevate for international donors and supporters to, to then support and scale even? Um, so maybe I think like that's a... it that way. I think uh, marketplace is a is a nice phrase. I'm going to steal that from you, just like I'm going to steal the Paris uh, climate uh, imagery. Shamelessly, I'm just going to steal those ideas from you, Victoria. Tomorrow, I will I will shamelessly steal uh, <laughs> shamefully steal some of your uh, oxygen and blood. <laughs> and great metaphors in use. So it's all about uh, stealing uh, and plagiarizing. Um, but thank you for that. And and and. Um, and, and, and really also thank you for emphasizing that these pledges could be procedural. Uh, we have some good uh, precedents of other uh, national governments that invited cities and mayors to be part of their delegation in other processes, uh, going back to the climate method uh, comparison to, to COP. Um, and, and, and so I think it's important that we, we explore uh, with the Emilia, Cecilia and others ways to, to perhaps uh, work with a, a smaller group of, of states that might be open to that idea and really showcase that as a good example for others to follow now and in the future. Wonderful, wonderful. Um, now, very rudely, Victoria, I need to leave. I've been summoned by my boss to a meeting. <laughs> so if I can, if I can beg your forgiveness, but I will, uh, I will see many of you tomorrow. I hope. I I, I forgive you and and, and bring <laughs> our uh, regards to to your boss. <laughs> will do. Bye bye um, now. Bye bye bye, Jonathan. And uh, speaking of pledges, speaking of commitments, uh, now I'm very pleased to um, give the floor to Sophie Van Asten, coordinator of the Mayor's Mechanism, the oil of the uh, MM, uh, Mayor's Mechanism engine, the reason why uh, we, can, we can move forward at this space. Um, the Mayor's Mechanism, for those of you who are not familiar, is, is, um, is, is a partnership between the uh, MMC, UCLG, uh, IOM, and it was uh, born out of uh, uh, this idea of, of, of um, influencing the GFMD, which is another international fora that is migration related. Uh, and now we're using this muscle to really um, uh, try to influence other processes. So Sophie, uh, can you share what our plans uh, are for, for, for the MRF and how the Global Task Force members can get involved uh, and engaged? Thanks so much, Tori, and hi, everyone. It feels really great to be part of this, this larger group. Uh, I mean, we have been discussing this within a smaller group of organizations, but it feels really good to share, and, and I'm really looking forward to hear your reflections also on how to connect dots uh, later in the meeting. Um, maybe just connecting a little bit to the, before I start, uh, just to the bigger political um, picture, and, and we've heard it from previous speakers. I mean, IMRF is the first time the international community will come together to assess progress uh, towards the GCM, but I think it's also a real um, 
opportunity for cities to assert their voice and to really bring concrete commitments uh, forward. Um, it's, as everyone knows, it's bound to be a politically challenging meeting because uh, migration is, is quite a controversial topic still. Um, but what is really interesting is that we can see, you know, the wealth of pragmatic but also principled actions um, that local governments have been bringing to the discussions that that is actually gaining um, attention and quite a bit of momentum, not only with the UN, but also with a group of member states. And it's been really encouraging, I think, also in this preparatory process to hear an increasing group of member states, you know, um, assert their support to uh, bring local governments to the center of, of also the IMRF discussions uh, in May. So I just wanted to point to maybe that political um, kind of element there. I've prepared a few slides, um, and I was wondering if the host could maybe um, facilitate my screen sharing. Thanks. So I hope everyone can see the slides. Yes. Okay, great. <laughs> so I won't go too much into the mayor's mechanism. I mean, Tori just uh, briefly alluded to it. It was really set out as a way um, between United Cities local governments, the mayor's migration council and IOM to look at the, 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 the meaningful engagement of local governments in the GFMD process, and is now increasingly looking at the global compact on migration and refugees in unison. And I think, uh, as Tori mentioned in her introduction as well, you know, that really reflects the de facto mandates of, of, of local governments uh, when it comes to migration management and is also uh, politically confirmed by a big group of, of local governments when they uh, signed the mayor's Marrakesh declaration in, in 2018. And I think it's also really symbolic that <clears throat> today we are speaking with UN Network on Migration, but also after, after me, we will have the colleagues from UNHCR also sharing um, how they're joining uh, our global efforts. So I think that is really important to acknowledge. Um, so maybe just going a little bit more towards, you know, the migration compact and the IMRF and how it can connect to local and regional governments. Um, it's been mentioned before the global compact on migration has multiple references to local and regional governments, both in the implementation section through multiple of the commitments, but also in the review section of the of the migration compact, which is important when we look at the IMRF. Um, it, it was mentioned before, this was, of course, the result of really um, quite consistent advocacy and organizing of local governments during the negotiations in, in 2018. Um, the IMRF then is the first time that governments will meet at the first time in four years uh, to discuss progress. And it really will set, and I think Jonathan also mentioned this, it will really set the precedent on how the forum engages with stakeholders. So it will be really a defining moment for whether the forum and then also the global compact on migration is inclusive of local governments um, or not. Um, we've heard this before, so I won't go too much through it, but maybe it's easy to have this slide in front of you on, on the structure of the IMRF, uh, what it will result in, uh, which is this progress declaration that Jonathan just explained, um, and will be preceded by the significant preparatory process, including the pledging, online repository, and thematic discussions. Um, I think something to point to um, is that currently there is no accreditation for local governments to be attending uh, in their own name, which is also why we're hearing, you know, this advice to go through national governments uh, to bring local governments as part of, of, their, um, of their delegations as they prepare for the IMRF. Um, so I would say within that context and then also within kind of a shifting uh, and fast paced process towards May, um, the, mayor's, um, the mayor's mechanism is looking at two, let's say, interconnected strategies. Uh, one is looking at, you know, how can we influence this preparatory process towards the IMRF and what are some of the key advocacy moments where we can uh, put our attention towards. And then secondly, and I'll come back to that later, is how can we showcase um, city actions and city commitments um, in the fields of the GCM and the GCR towards the IMRF, but also beyond. So, it, so this would have a much longer um, uh, time frame. I would also look, for example, to contributing to the Global Refugee Forum. So let me just very briefly start um, with uh, our key advocacy efforts um, with an eye to the IMRF process. So it's, it's been mentioned before, um, we have drafted a, a statement which we're planning to release tomorrow when the Secretary, Secretary General uh, 
briefs member states on his report. Um, it's been shared with the Global Task Force members for your input as well. Um, so, so I think you have all seen it. But the, the idea of this statement is really twofold. It's on the one hand, really to applaud uh, the multiple references uh, of local government actors in uh, the Secretary General's report. I think this is something that needs to be applauded. I mean, there's uh, multiple references to, to very concrete city practices, but also to the more structural you know, and key role of local governments as implementers uh, and partners. So this is definitely something that we're putting forward in this statement, as well as uh, saying, look, we as a constituency, we're ready to engage and we're ready uh, to come prepared to the IMRF as well. But then secondly, it, this is really pointing to um, the need for inclusive and transparent avenues for local governments to engage. As I mentioned before, you know, the the accreditation for local governments isn't, isn't open. So the statement really tries to provide a number of recommendations and Tori highlighted three uh, key recommendations that, that the statement makes to member states. But we've also put in one that is directed um, to the office of the president of the General Assembly and to the co-facilitators that Jonathan just mentioned to be Luxembourg and Bangladesh as they prepare the process um, for the progress declaration. So we're very much hoping that there will be quite a bit of willingness from, uh, from the co-facilitators to, um, to hear uh, local government's input. And I think it will be key, as Jonathan said, to, to be prepared with very specific input into that progress declaration. Um, so that's the statement, which will be released tomorrow. Then thematic positioning, as Jonathan mentioned, you know, there's quite a few thematic conversations that are taking place in pre preparation to the IMRF, but also at the IMRF, there will be thematic discussions. And these are organized, it's a bit, it's a bit technical, but these are organized um, in clusters of uh, GCM commitments. So what we're trying to do now from the MM is we've hired uh, a consultant to help us with crafting very short, very concise uh, position papers to have a number of key priority areas recommendations and city practices within each of those clusters so that these position papers might help us uh, to prepare for the thematic dialogues at the IMRF, but also to help us um, guide us in the input that we could provide for the progress declaration. Uh, I won't touch on the progress declaration, so the third point, because I spoke about that uh, quite a bit already. But then fourthly, and maybe importantly as well, especially as if we look at connections with the global task force, would also be to claim our own space. Um, it would be really important to bring a group of uh, city leaders uh, to the IMRF as well and to organize our own meeting on the sidelines of the IMRF so that we can make sure we convey our key messages uh, and asks also to uh, a group of our allies, I would say, such as member states, UN agencies, uh, and other stakeholders. So definitely something that is that is uh, on our radar to organize such, such a meeting um, in May. So then secondly, and I mentioned it before, so this would be the second strategy uh, with an eye to the IMRF, but very much beyond as well, would be to showcase um, local action commitment at the IMRF and beyond. Uh, and this, um, this kind of led to the idea of the mayor's mechanism, it, very much in partnership with UNHCR, and we're really glad uh, about that as well, as to launch a call to local action for migrants and refugees. This very much follows the mayor's Marrakesh declaration um, to fulfill both the GCM, the GCR, and also Agenda 2030. Um, very practically, uh, what we're trying to do with this call to local action is to provide really a one-stop shop for cities uh, to showcase actions, but also pledge commitments um, to both uh, of the compacts. So we're trying to make it easy. We're very much understanding that you know that these processes, both the GCM and GCR, can be cumbersome for local governments to be engaging with. So we're trying to um, help and facilitate that process. Um, the idea would be that we launch this call to local action at the IMRF together with uh, an, a mayor's mechanism flagship publication, which would kind of summarize um, the key actions that cities are taking uh, to achieve the GCM and GCR objectives and what some of the challenges, but also opportunities for the future um, could be. Maybe just zooming in a little bit on the objectives of this call to local action, uh, they're really threefold. On the one hand, it would be to expand the numbers of cities that endorse the mayor's Marrakesh declaration. So very practically, this would mean that we would be seeking you know, political endorsement uh, from a growing group of cities to adhere to the mayor's Marrakesh declaration. I think this political commitment is something that is really important as well as we, as we prepare for the IMRF. The second one would be to collect and showcase 
the actions that local governments are already taking or are planning to take um, to achieve both of the compacts. And I think this very much connects also to what Jonathan was saying, that this call to you know, have local practices feed uh, the discussion space and the practices that the UN network, for example, is, is gathering. So we're also, through our call to local action, we're trying to do that both towards the GCM and also towards the GCR. And then thirdly, and this, this would be for a later stage, um, because it would require additional um, capacity would, would be to create a cohort of you know, recognized local and regional uh, leaders um, to motivate um, scaling and investment in local and regional practices by states um, and others. Um, maybe just connecting a little bit to the pledging and Jonathan mentioned, you know, there will be a pledging process. There has been a pledging process launched um, in December, and, and the UN network is very much welcoming pledges ahead of the IMRF, but also beyond. What we're trying to do through our call to lo local action is really bring forward a number of city pledges already at the IMRF. I think this will be really strong as well, um, in addition to possibly connecting these pledges to uh, what other stakeholders, including member states, are pledging. So this is something that we're, we're trying to look at as we prepare for the IMRF. Um, and maybe just and, and to close, and I'll stop sharing my screen. Um, I think just, just some ideas for the discussion later on. Uh, I think there's multiple ways in which this work can connect to the global task force. Um, for example, if there's interest from uh, organizations on the line to join and collect city practices, please let us know. We would be very, very happy to share bilaterally, you know, the, the outreach package that we have prepared for the call to local action. And we'd very much um, happily share all of that with you and even, you know, brief you a little bit on the methodology that, that we're using, which we didn't really want to bore you with uh, on this call today. Um, also, if you're planning to engage at the IMRF to bring uh, local governments to the IMRF or your own organization, please let us know. I think it would make all the sense if we connect dots and, and try to merge efforts uh, as we prepare ahead of the IMRF. Um, thirdly, if you're interested in pledging um, and submitting, for example, a local action that you're already uh, doing and planning to do very concretely, um, please let us know. I think we would be um, really grateful if this could go also through the call to local action and happy to, to let you know uh, how, what that might look like. And then maybe just to close, um, really happily keeping you posted on the next steps of our work. And maybe we could even have another briefing uh, somewhere in spring to update you on where we stand uh, in terms of the process. So thanks very much. I'll, I'll post my, um, my email address in, in the chat box in case there's specific questions. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, Sophie, for this uh, overview. Um, and, uh, and, and, and especially, uh, I think uh, it's important that um, uh, cities interested uh, contribute to the, to the pledge uh, and to the call to action. But there is also other ways to contribute. Uh, for example, those papers that you, those thematic papers that you mentioned uh, that are elevating a subset of practices, that could be a very good way uh, to start. Uh, starting with the next one next week uh, on, on climate migration. Um, with that, uh, I'm, I'm thrilled to turn it over to uh, Claire Roberts Lamont, City Focal Point at UNHCR. Uh, UNHCR, which has joined as, as a partner in the call to action to connect to uh, the UN to, to connect the pledges uh, also to the UNHCR official review processes. Uh, this uh, is a great uh, way to be efficient and really leverage the work they were doing this time around for other comp for, for other processes in, in the future. Um, Claire, the floor is yours. We cannot hear you. Hmm. So I see that there's some um, technical difficulty. So maybe uh, while we wait for Claire to uh, come back in, uh, I'll leave it back to Emilia uh, to guide us through the next session, uh, the, the next uh, interactive uh, overview um, while we, we figure out uh, how to bring Claire in. <laughs> Thanks. Well, thank you very much, uh, Tori, and, and thank you for uh, for those interesting inputs. Oh, let's see whether Claire is now uh, ready to 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 talk. Let us. Are you ready, Claire? Yes. Yeah. 
Yes, Amelia, I'm so sorry. As soon as I tried to join, it disconnected because of the camera. So, so, so please for, accept my apologies. Um, please, for, do go for, ahead. Okay, I'll, um, first of all, I want to say what a huge honour it is to be invited into the into this partnership between IOM, UCLG and Mayor's Migration Council. And, I, and I'll keep my, my comments brief, but, and, I'll, and I'll look back at first, and then I'll look forward for the, the, the end of my comments. But we, we, we were so thrilled to have, um, in 2019, at our Global Refugee Forum, which is the Global Compact on Refugees, um, every uh, meeting that happens every four years for uh, to take stock on the progress on the implementation of the Global Compact on Refugees. And in 2019, cities were there in full force. We had a, we had a, um, a side event um, that looked at the role of cities. Um, and, and we also had uh, pledges made by cities um, in, in 2019 um, through the mayor's mechanism. So we had Bristol, we had Milan and we had Sao Paulo, which was just an excellent contribution and, and really started us as us, us rolling on, on, on mobilizing even further pledges from cities, um, from, from several cities in Turkey, as well as the, the, the city of Durban, which was, which was your World Congress, um, Emilia, in Durban in, in 2019. So, and, and really we've been, we've been on our country operations have been really working closely with these cities and supporting them to, to implement those pledges. So that, that was a really great way to, um, to, to, to really showcase the role of cities that were you know, really um, outlined, not just cities, but the role of city networks in the global compact on refugees. So, so that's looking backwards um, to, to 2019 and, and those pledges that were made then. Last year, we had a stock taking event, which um, is the sort of halfway point between our global refugee forum. So the next global refugee forum will be in 2023. And Amelia, it was great that you were able to speak at that, um, at that high level officials meeting at the end of the year. And, you know, over and we had Zurich um, representing the mayor's mechanism, speaking in a panel. And, and it was really great to, to, to hear the reflections from the, st um, the state participants and other uh, other um, members who, who were at that that meeting, you know, wanting to hear more about what what cities are doing. And we. Um, we had we had a, a meeting where we gathered uh, 210 cities from around the world where we we came up with some recommendations 17 in fact looking at what um cities needed in terms of really concrete support to to um to support refugees migrants and idps um and you know we partnered with yourselves um and with with many other organizations to to make that event happen so so that that's all looking backwards so here we are you know listening to your prep preparations um for the meeting in new york um coming up and and in, there's afro cities and there's the new urban agenda so there's there's lots of momentum um this year that we're really hoping um to to take advantage of and really promote this call to action because we've also got the global refugee forum in 2023 which we really hope hope to sort of blow away some of our um our partners and ngos and state states with the the the, the concrete actions that that cities are um are, are providing and, and and you know ensuring that the global compact is implemented so that that's in 2023 um so one year one year from um a little over a year from now so lot, lots to look forward to and certainly those those pledges that are made at the IMRF will be will be certainly showcased at the global refugee forum in 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 2023 and and onwards so um really great to be part of the the mayor's um, mechanism if only just as a partner but really looking forward to um seeing what 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 can happen in in the in the next two years many thanks Amelia Thank you very much, Claire. Uh, Tori, any any final comment from from your side or? Are no, you... I'm excited to to move forward uh, into the from process to 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 action and and really add more color to to this conversation. Mm. Well, uh, thank you very much. Um, indeed, I, I mean, it, it's very interesting because I was I was talking with some of the colleagues of the Global Task Force, other organizations that you don't usually see in this group. And 
um, and the comments that I get back is, wow, there has been a lot happening um, in, in these fields. And it, it's absolutely true. And some of the things that are happening is that um, I think we are coming uh, to, to realize what a very critical role this conversation needs to play in how we shape the world for the future. Um, in fact, um, what we, we keep mentioning these global agendas, of course, and relating this work back to, uh, to them. But I think also, uh, certainly from my organization's perspective, is something that we want to do. I think we need to put this discussion on human mobility in a different place in the summit for the future in 2023, 20, uh, and that we have to relay our uh, messages to the common agenda in, in a different in a different manner when it comes uh, when it comes to to migration. Uh, our our Lampedusa um, uh, charter uh, film says that this is not a a border's tale, um, and it has been mentioned here before as well. But very seldom do we put it in the light of how we want sustainability to look like and what kind of future we, we want. And I, and I think um, bringing this discussion to the broader community of local and regional governments uh, organizations um, is, is, extremely, is extremely relevant. And so as, as, I, uh, as, as we start in this interactive uh, dialogue now with other organizations, hearing about different perspectives um, to the work on migration. I would be very happy uh, if, if Lucy Slack, the Secretary General of uh, CIGF, the Commonwealth Local Governments uh, Forum, uh, could share some, some thoughts uh, with us about how your organization is, is perceiving uh, these, these discussions. Uh, Lucy, the floor is yours. Thanks very much, Amelia, and thanks everybody for a really informative first session uh, of this discussion. Um, maybe just coming at it from my perspective. So our organization works with individual cities and local governments, local government associations and ministries with responsibility for local government from across the 54 member states of the Commonwealth. And uh, we're very active partners in the Global Task Force. And I think I would certainly really agree with what Amelia has said in the sense that we really do need to broaden this out to try and make sure that we bring the other global task force members into this discussion because from from you know what I'm hearing and what I followed previously it's clear that um, as, as local government this is not a peripheral issue this is something that we really do need to integrate into the work that we're, we're taking forward as we uh, work towards sustainable urbanization going forward. Um, I mean, many of the obviously there's there's a real need to have a strong kind of technical focus to make sure that we don't lose a lot of the expertise that's clearly identified here. But I think, you know, as the global task force, as a, as a group of organizations really trying to kind of create a space for local government and a voice for local government, I think it would really um, add a lot of value if we were able to bring the global task force more squarely uh, behind this agenda to see how we can then use that voice to, to make sure that this is on the agenda as we go forward in, in the various kind of global debates and discussions that we're, we're involved in. Just from my own point of view, we are working towards the Commonwealth Summit, which is a meeting of heads of government, which is coming up in June of this year. Um, and we're taking to that summit a kind of what we're calling a call to action around sustainable urbanization. So slightly different from this call to action, but something that really is trying to put the need for a much stronger focus on sustainable urbanization and human settlements onto the Commonwealth member states agenda. And to me, it seems it, like it would be a massive missed opportunity if we don't start to integrate also this discussion and this dialogue, the expertise around this table, um, but also, um, you know, looking forward to how we can actually mobilize Commonwealth heads to think about how they can integrate work on, on uh, migration into, into their vision, if you like, for the future of um, sustainable urbanization in the Commonwealth. So thank you, Amelia. Thank you, colleagues, for a really informative first session. And I'm really looking forward to you know continuing to follow this as we go forward and seeing how we can find ways of making sure that we get it widely onto that global agenda using the the um, 
power, if you like, of the global task force members. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Lizzie. You know, during our annual meeting of the Global Task Force taking place on, on the 24th, uh, that's next week already, uh, we are going to have also a dedicated session to, uh, to migration, uh, which we are organizing around uh, the Lampedusa Charter that we want to put at the service. Of, of the global task force as articulating a narrative. Uh, but I, I think we might be able to, uh, to use that time to also uh, talk further uh, on, on next uh, steps. So thank you for those inputs and allow me now um, to go to uh, my colleague, uh, uh, Selim uh, from uh, UCL Yimewa. Um, he has left his own retreat to be able to join us. Salim, uh, I'm really grateful because I know how hard that is. And uh, Mewa, of course, is not, is, is not a surprise to you. It's, it's a very important uh, world region in, in terms of uh, uh, migration and, and refugee uh, policy. It's, it's home to vast numbers of, of, of refugees um, and um, it's playing a very leading role within the world of local and regional governments organization in articulating uh, the interlocution with international institutions. Uh, Salim is going to present uh, to us the work uh, that his organization is doing in the Global Task Force on, on Migration. Uh, Salim, uh, thank you for being with us. The floor is yours. Thank you, Emilia. Uh, indeed, we are talking about many task forces today, so it will be confusing a little bit, but yes. Uh, like you said, um, Mewa region is home to maybe one of the most number of refugees in the world, and also many of the refugee producing countries are in this region as well, so hosts and refugee producing countries. And likewise, um, for the migrants, it's it's the same actually. Actually, the definition is not that clear in this region, to be honest, but if you are talking about the Gulf countries in the region, many of them are receiving a lot of refugees compared to their uh, native population. So this is the background how we initiated this process. Uh, it was in 2019, the International Forum on Local Solutions to Migration and Development uh, took place in the city of Gaziantep, Turkey. Uh, it was a big event. It was a joint event between UNDP and UCLG Mewa and some other partners. Around 400 participants were there, uh, around 60 high level speakers, most of them are mayors, they were there. And at the end of the forum, we adopted the Gaziantep Declaration and the Global Task Force on Migration was established as a follow up to this uh, declaration, like it's the case in many other uh, similar stories. Uh, and this global task force on migration that we are leading is, I mean, it's acting on a gray zone between migration and refugees, as I've said, we are trying to encompass both of these issues in an equal manner, because it's not that clear, as I said, the line between the two is not that clear in our region in particular. Some people are migrating in order not to become refugees in the future, so it's just about timing sometimes, the definitions depend on the timing of the uh, human mobility. And actually we have a steering committee and this encompassing uh, attitude, encompassing both uh, issues equally is in the steering committee of our organization because we have both IOM, the leading organization of the GCM and also we have UNHCR, the leading organization of GCR in our uh, steering committee. So we are working together with both of them. And actually, like Claire was saying, we had a joint event between UNHCR in September last year. Uh, and the recommendations made in the meeting were discussed in the high level of officials meeting in last December. So, I mean, that's why I would like to highlight how diverse the GTFM steering committee is because not only IOM and UNHCR, but we also have a city, Gaziantep City is in the steering committee. Um, of course, we have us, UCLG Mewa is a global section of UCLG. UCLG World Organization is also with us. Uh, as Emilia was saying, uh, since several years, UCLG is also uh, considering migration as a 
top priority in its agenda. So UCLG itself embraced this uh, initiative. So we have UCLG World Secretariat with us. And uh, we have an NGO, the World Academy for Local Government and Democracy. And Union of Municipalities of Turkey is, uh, is also in the steering committee. So it's, it has a wide uh, membership in the steering committee as well. And the rest of the Global Task Force members are the signatories of the Gaziantep Declaration. So we are following up with them what they have been doing so far. We try not to lose track of their activities. So we had four events uh, in one year. Uh, one of them is physical and the rest were, of course, because of the COVID restrictions, they were online and one additional uh, joint event with UNHCR. So we just wanted to make sure we are following up what they are doing. We are sharing the best practices with them uh, and with the rest of the global community. And of course, it's all about partnerships. We are gathering the Global Task Force on Migration members, but it's always uh, in tandem with the other stakeholders and partners. Um, I think this was the summary of uh, what Global Task Force was about. Uh, so I just want to highlight one more thing. We are not trying to duplicate what the other you know, organizations or what the other initiatives are doing, but we just wanted to shed a mewa light on the migration and refugee issues. We know that in many parts of the world, it's an issue, but from our perspective, uh, it was a little bit different because uh, migration or uh, refugees are happening on the borders in this part of the world. We are not divided by the sea between the you know, refugee producing and refugee receiving countries. So uh, when we are talking about like organized migration, it's not easy in our region because you have to deal with the migration crisis when the crisis happens uh, right there. That's why, uh, uh, especially since the uh, Syrian crisis, there was a shift in terms of the migration management in this part of the world. It was first a uh, first responders initiative, how the local governments were responding to the crisis. We were dealing with that mostly, but then the crisis developed and it took longer than we anticipated. And then it became something different. Now you have to deal with millions of refugees. I mean, literally millions of, millions of refugees in three countries in particular in this part of the world, Turkey, Lebanon, and Jordan in particular. And you have to deal with them in a longer period of time. So all the cities in this part of the world are having some sort of long-term initiatives because it's not like uh, helping some people in crisis. It's about integration, it's about uh, social cohesion and, and, and etc. So we just wanted to make sure this perspective and what's happening in this part of the world is better heard in, by the global community. So thank you for inviting us to this event and uh, good success for the next part of the meeting. Thank you. Thank you very much, Salim, and, and I think it's only very legitimate that um, that, that uh, world uh, region uh, wants to to influence uh, what the messages are uh, as well to the international community on a topic that they are very much a part of in in their in their daily lives um, and also at uh, in particular at local government level. I mean, it is hard to think of a region of the world where. Um, where the, the the cities, the local governments are are having uh, living the impact, but also participating actively in seeking the solutions uh, um, for some of the challenges that this natural phenomenon and some times man-made uh, phenomena uh, in the way they, they affect the daily life. So thank you very much for that. And I think the work that we're doing here today is, is, is making sure um, that, uh, that the voices we are articulating uh, for local and regional governments are truly diverse, right? Of course, we need the champions and we need the dedication, but we also need the broader group to, to shape our messages and to ensure that that's the interlocutor 
institution that we are creating. So that's that's part of the effort um, today. Um, I, I am very pleased to to go now. I have several requests so uh, that people get uh, ready. I, I'm going to go now to uh, to C40. I think that Claudia Huerta is going to be presenting to us um, also a task force on on on. Um, climate and, and migration. So very, very happy to have you with us, uh, Claudia. And then I'm going to go to CMR. Uh, they are going to be uh, presenting also a task force on migration. And MMC is going to be uh, presenting the Global Cities uh, Fund. And then I will go on from there. So get ready and, and, and uh, let us uh, move along. Uh, another member of the Global Task Force, uh, uh, C40 and MMC, uh, presenting the uh, major Task for Climate and Migration. Hi, Amelia. Thank you so much for that introduction. So first off, I wanted to say that it's very nice to be here and to hear everyone else's amazing initiatives. So I am Claudia Huerta. I'm the manager for climate and migration diplomacy and campaigns for C40. And I'll be talking about the C40 and MMC Global Mayors Task Force on climate and migration. So similar to the one before, but with a bit of a wider thematic scope. So I'll start off by saying that for C40 and MMC, climate and migration is the top priority of our joint efforts. We're really committed to this line of work because essentially we recognize that mayors and local leaders play a really critical role on the front, front lines of climate migration. They make sure that any action that can adapt, help the residents adapt to the climate crisis, advances the inclusion of vulnerable populations, including migrants, instead of further entrenching those inequalities. So together, C40 and MMC, we've, we've joined and created this Global Mayor's Task Force on Climate Migration. It's a mayor-led initiative that is dedicated to accelerating local, national, and international responses to climate and migration challenges. There's nine mayors in this task force, so kind of addressing Amelia's concern of making sure that we keep these regional focuses intact. So there's three mayors in the Americas, LA, Houston, and Lima, three in Europe with Bristol, Barcelona, and Milan. And then we have Dakar in Africa, and then Freetown and Dhaka North are the co-chairs of the task force. So in the months since the task force was established back in the summer of 2021, we've worked with our member cities to position it as a leading voice in this space, which included our key accomplishment thus far, which has been launching our action agenda. This action agenda has six concrete calls to action in three strategic areas, urban resilience, urban inclusion, and urban transformation. And these calls are for national governments and the international community to better work and support our mayors in taking action that can address these joint crises of climate and migration. So we brought this action agenda forward at COP. We elevated climate and migration on the global agenda and then really emphasized how interconnected the GCM is with the UNFCCC and COP27. So in 2022, with this established, we're going to continue to more closely connect climate and migration on in the diplomatic sphere so that the accomplishments that we achieve at IMRF, we can move them forward into COP27. So whether it's elevating climate at IMRF or human mobility inside of COP27, those of us that are here know that these are really interconnected, but there's a lot of work that we can do to make sure that mayors are leading the call to make sure that any initiative that we take in either space is interconnected and really advances mayors' voices. So for us, the MRF, IMRF is an incredibly significant opportunity given the UN Network on Migration's focus on climate change that it already has, this dedicated thematic priority, as well as the GCM's recognition of the role of climate change and migration really help create this space and this context for us to operate within. Additionally, this UNSG report that was mentioned earlier in the session includes the task force. We've also worked with PDD on their GCM baseline mapping initiative. And so with all of these things that I've mentioned now, our objective is to take our advocacy even further. So given this UN network on migration's focus on climate and migration, the nexus between the two, we're supporting by mobilizing a mayor to speak at the February 23rd uh, webinar on climate and migration. We really wanna work together together with our own task force membership to better understand how climate and migration are going to directly be addressed 
at the IMRF and what scope, how we can engage. And this will really help us define how we can advance inside of those moments to highlight climate and migration and really critically the role that mayors play. And like I said before, we'll take our objective will be to take this momentum and take it all the way forward to COP27. So for example, we're incredibly happy to see that Bangladesh is a co-chair of the IMRF political declaration. And so another question for us will be at the local government level, is there an opportunity for local governments to engage in this initiative, in the larger pledging initiative? And how can we as C40 best engage and submit a pledge to the IMRF pledging initiative? So with that said, in this context given, I know that we're running tight on time, so thank you. And really looking forward to, to what comes out of this, thanks. Well, thank you very much. I think you have done pretty well in keeping the time and, and it was a very um, interesting presentation. Thank you very much. It's just that we have a lot of people that we would like to, to hear uh, from because beyond uh, CMR, uh, again, MMC on the Global Cities uh, Fund, we of course want to hear from Zurich, but also I would love to hear uh, from Metropolis uh, that is also uh, with us today. Cities Alliance is with us today. So it would be really good to find the time to, to hear from everyone. And I will go uh, to uh, CMR um, the CMR, uh, the Council of European uh, Municipalities and, and Regions, um, is, is the largest uh, regional uh, gathering of local and regional governments, and they have been working on, on migration for, for uh, quite a long time, and they have a specific projects as well that are dedicated to that. And I understand that Grazia Montella is, is here uh, with us uh, today to explain some some of the work that they are doing. Grazia, uh, welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much, Emilia. Uh, we are indeed very, very happy to be here. And so thank you for giving us the possibility and the chance to speak today. Um, so yeah, indeed, I'm speaking about uh, um, the two main initiatives that we are uh, currently at the CMR. So the first one is, as you said, the Task Force on Migration and Integration. And we very recently Release the new uh, position paper, which aim was really to um, um, position our our members, so in general uh, local and regional authorities, um, uh, in the discussion, the European discussion about the new pact on migration and integration. That is the main uh, legislative framework in which we have currently all the legislation um, ongoing legislation on migration. Um, so just to be very brief, uh, the three main key um, messages of this, uh, of this new resolution, this new position paper from CMR um, are, a, the first is a pledge um, for a more holistic vision um, regarding the inclusion and integration of migrants. And this connects very well with the Lampedusa charter process in which we are also involved. Um, and then it's really uh, to stress the importance of value-driven and, and the more holistic inclusion processes uh, at the local level, but as well as um, at the national and EU level. Um, then the second um, key message is to develop a concrete multi-level governance um, within the different existing uh, institutional structures of decision-making, uh, of, of course, on migration um, at European level. And the, say, the, the third uh, and final key message is to pr the promotion of the participation of uh, local authorities in the most relevant political arenas. And we as um, the ta as CMR task force, we are, for example, participating in the, in the um, urban agenda for EU inclusion partnership of migrants and refugees as one of the main um, um, arena which stakeholders uh, of different from different fields can actually have a say. Uh, on the on the migration um, legislation and migration um, practices as well, and then uh, some of the members of the task force are also engaged um, and involved in the project in in, in Inclusivis project that is our main um, uh, flagship project on on migration, and um, its aim is to exchange and learn uh, best practices around migrants and refugee integrations like all around Europe. Uh, we have six, pa eight pairs of cities and, and associations matched together. Um, and the final object, uh, objective of the, of the project will be to come out with uh, action plans, so concrete action plans that cities can put in place um, to enhance, to boost um, the uh, inclusion and um, policies at the local level. 
And on another side, we are also very active in the awareness raising through the participation to several international campaigns. Uh, last year, we were um, also uh, hosted by the World Refugee Week as well um, with a um, major mechanism with Sophie, uh, collaborating with Sophie. So we are very, very pleased to, to be also um, into this conversation with you today and we will uh, follow up on this. Thank you so much. Well, thank you very much, uh, Grazia, for introducing us to this broad agenda also in the European context. And also, I, I really welcome that you have linked it up with other agendas like the new urban agenda, which is not a usual uh, aspect in, in, in this kind of conversation and still very, very, very relevant indeed. Um, so thank you for that. Let us go now to Maggie. Uh, Maggie Powers uh, is going to be presenting this wonderful Global Cities uh, Fund, uh, where many of us are part. Uh, Maggie, the floor is yours. Thanks so much, Amelia. Um, so I'll, I'll keep it super brief. I just want to share a bit of background about the Global Cities Fund and, and some ideas for how it can partner with the, the work that we're discussing today, the call to action, and, and the way forward on the GCM and GCR. Um, so the Global Cities Fund started off last January really as an, as an emergency response effort to help fill the resource gap of cities that were trying to include migrants and refugees in their COVID responses. We quickly set up our own um, instrument to channel international funding and technical resources to city governments in partnership with, with many of you on the call here today, Amelia and UCLG, IOM, UNHCR, and, and UN Habitat. And, and the first chapter on inclusive pandemic response currently funds nine city-led projects with more projects in the pipeline ready for funding. And just to share an, a, a, an example of how this plays out in practice, Mexico City used the fund to expand its existing municipal income protection program to provide direct cash assistance to migrants who previously could not access the service. Um, not only that, but for the first time in the city's history, it connected the, the municipal secretariats of labor, social inclusion and health in a partnership to, to execute the project and create a coordinated city response for migrants, refugees, and IDPs. So really a, a true example of how the GCM can be made real within cities. And we wanna work with, with each of the, the GCF cities to submit these to the call to action and have them represented as, as part of this broader work. Um, and, and we're ready to go even further. At COP26, as, as part of the partnership that Claudia mentioned with C40, we announced the next chapter, a Global Cities Fund for Inclusive Climate Action. And at the IMRF, we'll be ready to make five additional pledges to the GCM with the announcement of five new city-led projects in Africa, addressing the needs of um, migrants and displaced communities affected by the climate crisis. So that's where we're at now, but um, a thought on where I think we can go with this and connected to the, the broader vision of the call to action. Um, We've succeeded, we, we've proven this tool to be effective on, on COVID and now climate um, as, a, as a real way to channel international resources specifically for city-led projects on migrants and refugees. And it's, and it's been effective for cities, creating fiscal feasibility, amplifying coordination with UN agencies, and now connecting those dots between practice and the city diplomacy. Um, we have the opportunity to make this a bigger and more permanent and predictable funding structure that operates at a larger scale. What, what I'd like to see really is, is a global cities fund for migrants and refugees that's directly connected to the call to local action, a fund that unlocks resources and technical assistance with the explicit purpose, the underlying goal of helping cities achieve the GCM and the GCR and creating that, that champion city community that Sophie spoke to earlier. So it's, it's a big idea, um, but a natural expansion of the fund but requires a new partnership and, and, and new funding, really. So if anyone is interested in this, I want, I'm happy to have a conversation. We, we hope we can count on you and, and to continue the partnerships that we have with the exp fund, expand it and, and secure funding really to make this happen. So I will leave it there. Thank you so much, Amelia. Thank you, Maggie. I, look, we like big dreams, right? And maybe this one is not even such a big one. I mean, I think it's a realistic aspiration. Uh, maybe this group here is not 
really the funders that we need, but we are certainly the ones that can articulate the interest to get the funding. And Fatima Fernandez, you know, she, she leads the work on migration in my team. She was saying, no matter what kind of environment we are at, it's mostly women in these conversations on migration. I think that says something. And Dreaming Big, look, that is something we know how to do and, and making things happen. So who knows? I am very open to looking into possibilities as well to, to make that, um, that fund uh, more powerful and also to help smaller cities access that type of fund because it is also very difficult to go out from the usual cities that we know the name of to cities that actually need that funding but do not have enough people uh, with the capacity to develop the type of projects that, that we need to, uh, to make um, that kind, uh, that kind of, of financial uh, support um, useful. So that is also something uh, that we need to think about uh, together. And I, and I think we have the minds uh, in this room uh, to pull uh, to pull that uh, off. So thank you for uh, for inspiring us, uh, Maggie, and, and to MMC for the work that has been done putting together that fund. Um, I'm really very happy to uh, that UCLG is a partner uh, of these efforts. Um, Bettina, uh, Bettina Eter from uh, Zurich, uh, it's is so good to have you with us, a perspective from a local government. Thank you so much, Emilia and um, all the partners um, gathered on this call. I hope you can hear and see me. Um, yeah, I just want to share a few um, reflections from the perspective of a city that's um, affected by all this and that is extremely grateful that all of these different organizations um, that are representing cities' interests are coming together to, um, to raise the momentum for, as I call it, global advocacy on migration towards the IMRF. So the city of Zurich is really a proud member of the Mayor's Migration Council. Mayor Mauch is one of the founding members of the MMC um, back in 2018, 2019, as she really believes in the power of collective engagement to achieve shared goals. Um, the bottom line is that migration is an international and at the same time a very local phenomenon. So what cities are advocating for is to sit at the policy making table as equals and represent that local perspective to complete the picture and design sustainable migration policy that is in fact grounded in local reality. So we are so grateful um, about the headway, the important headway that MMC and partners um, have made in opening up seats for local authorities at the global policymaking table. Um, however, the call of the Global Compact for Migration for states to involve and cooperate with local authorities remains far from fulfilled because at the end of the day, cities want to sit at the national policymaking tables because that's where, the, where migration policies um, are made and take effect. So in that regard, we believe that collective engagement at global level is um, a way for cities to bridge that gap or the lack of national involvement to advocate just that national involvement. So owing um, to the strong federalist system we have in Switzerland, there are of course a lot of mechanisms for Swiss cities to engage. However, even in our national setup, there are cooperation gaps that lead to inconsistent or ineffective policies when national and local perspectives are not brought together which is often the case in the area of migration and, and many others. So as an example, a concrete example um, where we can see this gap, the COVID-19 pandemic um, has made existing but also new poverty very visible in Zurich, which is the richest city in Switzerland with long lines forming at food banks. Many of the individuals in those queues are migrants, often undocumented migrants that avoid turning to social welfare for fear of consequences for their migration status or even worse, expulsion. To address this issue, the city of Zurich in cooperation with relief organizations introduced a low threshold economic assistance program, which has led to huge political controversy and had to be stopped, um, even though its need is evident. So knowing that cities around the world face similar or far worse disconnection between the national and local local policy levels, um, Zurich is committed to engage collectively with others. And in this vein, we 
strongly support such initiatives as the upcoming call to local action by the mayor's mechanism or the Global Cities Fund that has been launched by the MMC and many more, because all of these showcase and catalyze local solutions for inclusion and social cohesion. And so as long as local authorities are not invited to the national policy making table in a systematic manner, global advocacy will remain essential in elevating concerns of local authorities. In this vein and in line with the recognition of cities in the GCM, the meaningful participation of local authorities in their own right in the first International Migration Review Forum should be facilitated. However, as Zurich and other interested cities have recently learned when applying for special accreditation to the IMRF, the only way, and Jonathan Prentice from the UN Migration Network mentioned this, for local authorities to participate in the IMRF, um, except for maybe being directly invited, is through their national delegations. But as we all know, and for various reasons, and often highly political ones, this is not or not yet a viable option for many cities around the world. And so we think this is in a way a bit of a setback to true involvement and is inconsistent with the call in the GCM and the recent report of the UN Secretary General to recognize the instrumental role of cities in implementing the objectives of the compact. So on the positive note, this is just all the more proof um, that we need to continue with collective action by local authorities for local authorities. And this is what Zurich is in for as long as we're part of the MMC and of course beyond. And we really look forward to, to cooperating further with MMC and um, all the partners that um, are involved in the same cause. So thank you so much for giving me the chance. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Bettina. And this is exactly why I put that comment in the chat. That that having too. local and regional governments in the national delegations is an old trick that we have been using since the very outset of the United Nations, but it in no way reflects the independence and word of a sphere of government uh, like, that we are representing because very often uh, we, there are different views there and, and those different views need to be brought to the international community, not as a domestic affair, but as a vision of how we want to shape uh, communities and it's, it's not is the only way we feel and, and we are making progress in this respect. Look, the, the global um, the UN Global Task Force, another one, on the future of cities um, that, that in fact is, 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 gathering, um, is gathering very soon again to look at how to strengthen the structural relations between local and regional governments and the United Nations. Um, is, is, is noticing and is thinking about how to ensure that we can um, that we can share with national governments uh, that by having the voices of local and regional governments, we are not necessarily interfering with uh, domestic affairs. That is just creating a vision from a different type of experience and from a different sphere um, of, of government. So we are making progress there and the organized constituency is critical. And this is why we, we want to emphasize that it's, it's, it's good to have initiatives all over, but it's very, very relevant to ensure that non aleatory choices are made when choosing who represents whom. Uh, because if, if we let that happen, then it, it will be hard um, to achieve some, some of, the, of the pledges that, that we are making together. So thank you very much. Um, Bettina, for, for refocusing the discussion to one of the very important things that we are doing here together. Um, I see, oh, I, I lost you. No, Brigitte, you're, you're here uh, from uh, our colleagues from Cities Alliance, another very important alliance that, that works on, on some of the key challenges of urbanizations. Slums is one, but migration and slums is, is something that is really linked and informality um, as well. So Brigitte, uh, we're really happy that you're with us uh, and as a partner of the of the global task force uh, welcome the floor is yours thank you very much Emilia and thank you for giving me a few minutes I would like to come in rather adding some reflections by listening to all of you today um, during the past two hours 
Um, many of you know the Cities Alliance, you are members to the Cities Alliance, the government of Switzerland, UCLG. Um, we have Lucy here from CLGF, we have C40. So you do know the Cities Alliance, I won't go into detail. Um, the perspective which we can add listening to you is um, the Cities Alliance is working against, um, is working in informal settlements, in slums, in low-income countries, and we work towards the eradication of poverty. Whether this is a, a migrant, whether this is a long-term resident in the, study, in the city, the mission of the Cities Alliance is to reduce urban poverty by promoting the role of cities, and there is where we are all coming in. And the Cities Alliance is made up of a constituency of members. Um, which brings variety to the table. These are national governments, these are representatives of local governments, and these are representatives of slum dwellers. So these are three very, very important constituencies to also have an influence on the life of migrants and long-term residents in cities. And when I was listening to uh, Sophie early on, and also to uh, Emilia and Vittoria, how you are going to instrumentalize the mayor's mechanism beyond the original role to just be at the GFMD. I think this is where you are building up a muscle which goes throughout these different mechanisms that have come up over the past years. The GFMD is an old instrument. Now we have the GM, we have the Global um, Compact for, for Migration, for Refugees. We have so many mechanisms coming up by, by building the mayor's mechanism as an instrument that goes across with this group of people who learn from each other is something I think is very, um, has very much value to invest in. A thought I wanted to give to Sophie, and I don't know whether you have explored it, also coming from the Cities Alliance where we represent civil society as much as governments, is whether you do um, not have scope to build alliances across the different mechanisms at the GFMD. The GFMD has started out also as a governmental process and we had the mechanism for civil societies coming along, then the mechanisms for private sector and now also mechanism for mayors. So I think in order to build up this muscle to get this seat at the table for cities, its mayors and other representatives, there can be scope to build alliances across these different mechanisms as well to, to push in and demand this seat. Um, Emilia, I think a so important point for us as well, um, you have focused, we need to look at the regions, right? Migration and human mobility means different things in different regions. And we would like to add on also to different sizes of cities. There is different diplomatic strength in a capital city in a low income country than there is for, for smaller cities, intermediate cities, towns. And this is something which we somehow need to bring into the discussion as well. Um, last but not least, um, also what uh, Bettina has mentioned, um, I think it's something which we see in the example in Uganda is that Cities Alliance is also implementing what Jonathan was saying, how do we program it? What is the next step from the diplomacy? How do we program it? Cities Alliance through its members is managing a trust fund where we also program it. And Bettina, what you mentioned, what we see in Uganda, yes, we need to provide also a table for cities of all sizes at the national dialogue, at the national table. And I think by being, by supporting those cities at the global level, they win. They win on confidence, they win on voice, they win by a lot of support by all of us in order to also get some, some hearing at the national level. With this, I'd like to close. Uh, thank you very much for, for inviting us and looking forward to see where this, is, uh, where this will proceed. Thank you very much, Brigitte. I, I, I think over the many, many years that we have worked uh, within the Global Task Force um, uh, is building on that muscle of diversity uh, that, that, we, that we want to, to ensure. And as, as long as we can make sure uh, that the major's mechanism is, is directly connected with the broader ecosystem um, and um, works 
with that oversight of the broader ecosystem, I, I think we will be we will be okay. So uh, that 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 is the space that we are offering um, to make sure that that oversight um, is is guaranteed. Indeed, allow me now to give the floor, and I think we are starting to wrap up because Cecilia is going to do closing remarks uh, to Metropolis, and we've got uh, Oscar Chamant uh, uh, with us uh, today. Oscar, the floor is yours. Thank you, Emilia. I don't know if you are, if it's okay, my microphone, is it working? It's okay. Yes, we can okay. hear you perfectly. That's great. I'm, I'm very happy because the last person, the, the last speaker, uh, Brigitte, she told something that I was listening all the time, uh, that I was, I have the feeling that it was missing, that is the, the diversity uh, of the sound on the size of the cities that at the end are where all the people is moving ahead. So it's important to keep in mind that diversity of cities, but also what it implies to the governance of this kind of situations. I mean, we need to keep in mind that it's not only a matter of what's happening with the people at the end, but also what is important is the governance of this diversity. And I would like to say the complexity of the urban and metropolitan reality. In that sense, I would like to share with you some talks that we are working together with UCLG and the London School of Economics in a project that is called Emergency Governance uh, Initiative. That what is what we are trying, because it's not an easy project, is to understand what how the cities, no matter their size, and coordinate with a supranational, super local uh, scale, and also regional and local authorities in a way that, okay, let's try to face this situation in an emergency, complex emergency situation, like the, the migrations. The migration are that kind of complex emergency that needs a different kind of answer and a different kind of complexity and a different kind of um, synergies between institutions like all that we are here together, but also local governments and different mechanisms to understand the possibilities, because it is not only emergency, but it's a possibility for the territory to, to face this situation. So from Metropolis, we would like to share the importance of not only the metropolitan scale, I'm talking from Metropolis, the metropolitan scale is all something that is important to keep in mind that most of the cities in the world are facing big cities, but also the need to, to embrace the complexity of and diversity of this situation and this possibility for the territory. So I'm very happy, we are very happy to be part of many people talk, talking about the same issue that is critical for the cities. And from Metropolis, I would like to say thank you, Emilia, for this invitation and to all the team. Uh, we are happy to work together. Have a nice day. Over to you, Emilia. Uh, thank you very much, Oscar, and, and thank you for bringing this perspective. It's, it's very often that when we work together with our colleagues from Metropolis that are gathering that metropolitan cities, uh, we find ourselves looking at the agenda from a much broader perspective, a territorial perspective. I, I mean, this is not a border tale, and 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 you know, um, there are many peripheral cities that are small in size um, that that play a very critical role and non-peripheral uh, cities, just s s small cities, including rural areas, um, that, that are really affected by, by this topic as well. And, 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 and when we have worked together on this global fund that, that um, Victoria is gathering ideas for funding about in the chat. <laughs> I think it's a great one. Uh, but we we have faced uh, we have faced the difficulties of of, of having uh, opportunities uh, to 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 support. Um, local governments that might not have the capacity to present a, a, a bankable uh, from the perspective of um, um, well-built kind of project because simply we, we lack the capacity. So I think it's our responsibility uh, to, to take this, this on board. Um, and, and it's certainly the responsibility of, of all the diversity of the networks that are here uh, to make sure that we are voicing those uh, interests um, as well. Uh, we're starting to wrap up, but I can still give the floor to someone if, if we want. I, I see Luján Pérez from, from Montevideo. I don't know, Luján, si quieres tomar la palabra. Um, 
Adelante, Luján. ¿Qué tal? Buenos días, Emilia. ¿Qué tal? Buenos días, para, buenas tardes para todos. Bueno, muchas gracias por haber recibido esta invitación. La ciudad de Montevideo ha venido trabajando a través de las redes que integra, como Mercociudades, Coalición LAC, UCI, eh, ALAS. Ha venido trabajando mucho el tema de las migraciones y ha venido trabajando, sabemos que que América Latina es un territorio complejo para el, te el tema de las migraciones y que, bueno, estos últimos años eh, ha habido un, un gran movimiento eh, humano entre los diferentes países y que, bueno, esto ha llevado a que realmente nos concentremos en el trabajo continuo eh, sobre el tema de migración. Eh, bueno, como este, muchos conocen, nosotros eh, trabajamos mucho sobre la base de la Carta de Lampedusa y, y el pasado mes de octubre llevamos, una, con, llevamos adelante con, con el apoyo de, de CGLU y en coordinación con, con las redes más importantes de América Latina, llevamos adelante lo que es eh, la consulta regional eh, y, y bueno, hemos obtenido importantes... Eh, eh, importantes avances e importantes opiniones de parte de, de, las, de las ciudades que, que integran las diferentes redes y sobre todo nos ha ayudado para poder eh, hacer un, un compilado de, bueno, de que, cu cuáles son los pasos que nosotros eh, tenemos que, que seguir y cu cómo es la forma en que podemos avanzar, como bien lo, lo han afirmado acá, no todas las regiones eh, eh, son iguales y no todas las regiones tienen el mismo tratamiento, entonces, bueno, desde allí podemos obtener las particularidades que tiene América Latina y el Caribe. Otro punto en que nosotros hemos estado trabajando es eh, sobre la presentación de proyectos al, al Fondo Global, este, nos parece una muy interesante oportunidad para el apoyo a las diferentes ciudades de América Latina, y, y bueno, este, seguimos en contacto con, con todos este, los, eh, los todos los, este, las directivas del fondo para poder seguir avanzando ya algunas ciudades como Ciudad de México, Medellín, este, bueno, sabemos que, que son parte del, de, de, de este importante apoyo que, que nos dan para, para la migración. Y bueno, este, tenemos eh, muchas expectativas sobre el trabajo que podamos eh, seguir concretando eh, en este grupo global y bueno, poder seguir participando de campañas o, o de diferentes acciones como la campaña de la diversidad que hay en ti y bueno, seguir participando de diferentes acciones que, no, que nos pueda este, seguir avanzando, se, eh, dejar seguir avanzando en, en este tema tan, tan complejo como es el tema de, de la movilidad humana. Nuevamente muchas gracias, muchas gracias a ti Emilia y muchas gracias por invitarnos a participar. La diversidad que hay en ti es una de las campañas más bonitas que yo recuerdo, eh, con permiso de, de, de la campaña Is Not a Border Tale de Lampedusa, eh, de la cual también obviamente estoy enamorada, eh, pero, pero realmente es una campaña muy, muy bonita de, desde, desde Mercociudades que, que realmente nos, nos acerca también al corazón, a la realidad. De, de todos los días, ¿no? Eh, de, de lo que significa para, para nosotros esto. Y siendo eh, la gran mayoría de nosotros migrantes y viviendo todos los días lo que significa poder conseguir un, un permiso de trabajo, aunque tengas trabajo y no te lo den en la Unión Europea eh, y en mi propio equipo, hay estas realidades. Eh, realmente es, es una campaña muy, muy, muy bonita y es importante que nos acerquemos a esa parte de realidad ¿eh? que nos toca a todos al trabajar, eh, a trabajar en esta temática. O sea que te agradezco muchísimo, Luján, por traer esa perspectiva de Montevideo que además participa en, en muchísimas redes y, 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 y es realmente el, el reflejo de, de lo diversa que es nuestra, nuestra comunidad. 
Well, I, I think, I mean, we haven't heard from, from Africa and I know our colleague uh, Lionel from UCLG Africa is around and we've got AfriCities coming up, which is this explosion of municipalism in, in, in the region. I don't know if you are still around, uh, Lionel, you are. Just a few words before we give the floor to Cecile. Yes, thank you, everybody. Uh, thank you to give me the floor. Uh, first, I want to apologize for the fact that uh, our Secretary General is not uh, present. He's actually in Bruxelles to talk about uh, municipality, as you know. And uh, yes, you, you highlight AfriCity, and thank you for that. It's a kind of um, a publicity for us. Thank you. And um, yes, of course, we, we will talk about AfriCity, about migration during AfriCity. And um, our, our host, and, and UCLG Africa decided to, to highlight uh, the fact that, uh, yes, we will talk about migration, but we will highlight the, the diaspora contribution to the migration. So uh, it, it will be a, an important moment for our partners to be, to be here to talk about um, the, the solution, uh, the difficulty to, to help our cities, our African cities to, to, to better uh, manage uh, migrant and migration. So um, we, we, we invite you to, to share uh, the floor during AfriCity to talk about migration. We know that uh, the partnership that you build, you as um, our mother organization, uh, you build um, a solid link uh, between Europe, Africa, and our different organization to, uh, to, to, to be more, more efficient uh, with our response to migration. And um, we, we succeed Africa, UCLG Africa to, to build link during COVID. And now we want to make the points uh, uh, during what the Mayo uh, succeed to, to do with all the network of actors in the territory during AfriCity. For example, with civil society, and I'm happy to see that the migration network uh, for uh, in in nation United Nation um, highlight the fact that uh, there is a link between civil society and local authority to to uh, to ensure the um, the protection of migrants with all the thematics like education. Um, uh, housing, for example. And I, I was talking about partnership and uh, it's, it's important for us to, to highlight the fact that we, we, we are launching a project with uh, our partner from Brussels, uh, not for, for Germania, uh, scientists uh, to, to be precise, uh, to, to help us to, uh, to, better, to have a better analysis like Cities Alliance do, like you, you are doing with the MCC, uh, to, to give more information, more data, and more comprehension about migration uh, in local, in local, at local level. So thank you, thank you. And I hope that uh, you, you, will, you will attend this summit, uh, not only as, um, uh, as, uh, as participant, but as a session, uh, session partners, because we, we want you, we know uh, the way you, you, you lead when you, when you organize um, an event. So we want you to be here. I talk about UCLG, Cities Alliance, MCC that uh, we know actually, and uh, is uh, sec the secretary of, um, uh, of the, the Migration Council. And of course, Cities Alliance and the other organization that uh, I didn't mention the name. So thank you for this opportunity and thank you. welcome to PCMO. Thank you, uh, Lionel of Baitrela. We, we will be there, of course, and uh, we will make sure also that the partners gathered here uh, uh, bring the voice of, of, of migration also to, to the heart of our cities that is going to be organizing Kisumu, uh, an intermediary city in, in, in Kenya. So looking forward to that, Lionel. Look, uh, I know Cecile needs to leave and she's going to do some concluding remarks, but I have seen that Annie Surra 
Salaman Khan also wants the floor. So what I'm going to do, um, Cecile, uh, do you want to go first? Just to make sure that you make your next meeting and then I will still give the floor to Anisur. Is, is that something workable or, or, or do we give Anisur just one minute? Can you please? Yeah, I prefer to do the closing as the scene. So very good. Please, uh, to, uh, thank you. Very good. So, uh, dear colleague, um, director of the migration program uh, program at the Agya Foundation, and I understand this is in Bangladesh. Um, can you hear us? And are you ready to take the floor? One minute, please. Are we actually able to give the floor to an attendee? Yes, we are. And and he has, I mean, he has the possibility to, to get the floor if he's there. We cannot hear you, dear colleague. The floor is yours. Cecile, I would say you take over and see what happens <laughs> with our colleague in Bangladesh. Uh, Cecile, thank you for your patience. Back Thank you. you so much, everyone. Thank you, Amelia. I think that that's been a wonderful meeting. I felt a lot of energy uh, throughout our discussions. And uh, I think we've managed to turn a conversation on a process into something that is really meaningful. Um, and that's not always what happens within the, within the UN uh, context, right? So I think that was really brilliant. And maybe it has to do with the fact that a lot of, uh, of us are women in this call. I don't know, Amelia, indeed, uh, that, that I could not help noticing that reality um, and I'm really embracing it. Also what I think was fantastic uh, is the fact that we really went beyond just talking about the GCM and I think all of you made very clear connections uh, with the work that you're doing in your own uh, realities and, and, and all the diversity that exists indeed within different regional contexts, different uh, city sizes, uh, different you know, an economic environment. And, uh, but nevertheless, I think there is a, a clear understanding about how important human mobility is for all of those contexts. And this is really something that we have, uh, you know, as local actors, such an important role to play in. And I was really happy in particular that we talked about, you know, the ramification with, uh, with uh, the, the, the next COP, uh, looking as well, uh, you know, what does it mean in terms of the review of the new urban agenda, because this is also around the corner. Uh, what does it mean in terms of uh, us, uh, you know, looking at the uh, fulfilling the, 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 the 2030 sustainable development goals and how we bring this back uh, into the perspective of what we need to do uh, for the, you know, the global compact on migration. Because again, and I think that's a very important notion that I'd like to leave you with, good migration governance as coined in the GCM is not about migration policies only. It's about all the other policies. And this is where you have such a crucial role to, to bring them together. And I think really, and I'd like to turn back attention to the local call to action. We've talked about it. We're very grateful uh, you know, for Sophie to walk us through the main elements. And, and I think now it's really about bringing all of these into these key core messages and making sure that they become impactful. And I think we've heard from Jonathan uh, as well as Sophie some very clear avenues as to how we can weigh in uh, in the next step uh, leading to the, uh, to the IMRF, the IMRF itself. Um, and there's, there's a lot there that we have to, to achieve. So I hope, you know, the great energy that I felt uh, throughout this meeting can really continue and, and we go to the finish line and we make sure that all of, that we really uh, are impactful in, our, in, in the way we are articulating the difference that we make. So I really urge you all to, uh, to touch, to get in touch and continue to be in touch with the mayor's mechanism that I really want to, to thank for organizing this great meeting. Uh, and, and making sure that all of those discussions that we've had really continue and, and really are changing the lives of the, of the migrants uh, and people uh, you know, in, in mobile situation that we are working for. So I'd like to, to leave you with those words and um, really warm thanks again for your active participation and goodbye, uh, Emilia. Goodbye, everyone. Goodbye, everybody. Uh, thank you, Tori and, and, and Sophie, Fatima, uh, Maggie, everybody for the work done. Thank Bye. you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. Keep well, colleagues. And see you next week at the annual meeting of the Global Task Force. Bye.